Michael, I am excited to chat with you. In fact, it's kind of funny. We, I come on a little pre-chat. I always like to just kind of talk with guests beforehand. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever talked with anyone so long. I feel like we've already spent like an hour just chatting, um, getting to know each other. It's been a lot of fun. So thanks for, thanks for all your time. Oh, thank you. No problem. Yeah. So Michael, before we even get started, I want to make sure everyone knows where to find you. Um, so can you share with everyone uh, kind of where you're based out of and, and what your website and your Instagram is? Yeah, so um, my name is Michael Ramos. I'm a wedding photographer, portrait photographer. Um, mm -hmm. I'm based in Rutherford, New Jersey. And uh, it's ramos.com. That's simple. Um, and my uh, Instagram is mjrpics, mjrpics. Awesome. I know uh, we've featured you quite a few times on our Instagram as well. So um, I, I love your work, man. It's just Absolutely. absolutely outstanding. And, and I got to say, how in the world did you get Ramos.com? Like, what a great domain name. I, um, it was, it was taken, but it wasn't in use. And, uh, yeah. I kind of give it the old, you know, the little, the, the Cuban charm. I was like, Hey, you know, I'm a little, a little business starting off and all that stuff. And the guy actually gave it to me for nothing. And I just sent them a really big target gift card as a, cause I just felt wrong, not giving them something. Yeah. Um, so I've gotten many phone calls and emails trying to buy my name for a lot of money. And I just don't want to let it go. Cause it's ramos.com. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, it's like once in a lifetime. So that's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. And now you mentioned Cuba. Is that, that's where you're from? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. My family is you... uh, you know, Cuban. Yeah. So, uh, for those que están hablando, or say, los que están mirando, podemos hablar español también. Sí, sí, claro. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, okay. hey, um, that's, awesome. that's awesome have you been back to cuba no we haven't um you know there, we, with all the history that's back there with my family and stuff uh i just have gotcha. no okay got it you, you know and the reason i ask is because your style i don't know the way you in fact there's a few photos in here it looks like they were shot maybe in mexico or dominican republic yeah. or something but you have this great style where it, even being from New Jersey, you, you kind of have this like Latin flair to your photographs, which, oh, which yeah, I yeah. absolutely love. So I would love to show so you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one place that kind of reminds me, I know I've never been to Cuba, but you know, that kind of reminds me of Cuba. If you ever get a chance to go is Panama. Um, and they have like an old district, an old neighborhood in Panama that it, it very much mimics what Cuba looks like. They have the old cars and everything else. And so it's really oh, interesting. Yeah. We'll definitely yeah. have to talk about that one. Yeah, for sure. Well, well Michael, I'm, I'm excited, man. You, you got some incredible work. And I got to say, um, you know, like I said, we featured numerous of your photos already on Instagram. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people are already familiar with you. Um, but I've really gotten to, to really, I, I feel like in the last two months or something, you just exploded in the community. Um, and there was one post, if you don't mind, I actually would love to start with this post to kind of chat about it. Um, there was a post that you did and it, it just blew up. I mean, everybody was just loving it. And I think for this one, I think I'm actually going to share my desktop, if that's cool. Um, yeah. I think it'll be easier uh, to, to chat about it. It's this post right here. Can you see this? Yes. I, okay. So, so Michael, this post looks like September 30th. Uh, I mean, what did it, it reached uh, 20,000 people. You had a bunch of comments, a bunch of likes, and uh, it looks like a bunch of wows. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I, I would love, if, if you don't mind, I, I would love to start with this post and we can kind of chat about some of these photographs. Yeah, and uh, I, I know even during our pre-chat, we there's some really cool things that you brought up. And, and so um, if you guys are watching, if this is the first How I Shot It you've watched, uh, you're in for a treat. So this will be a lot of fun. All right. So cool. with that, so, Michael, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. Sounds <laughs> good. So, so I'm not sure if anybody has seen my, my, my pictures, you know, from before, but I'm kind of a simple shooter. Um, I respect a lot of people in the magma community that are so creative with how they light things and shoot through things and stuff like that. And I love watching that stuff. It just doesn't, um, I, my mind doesn't work that way. And what I'm looking for is quality of light and then how to add other light to make that quality better. Um, Cause this shot right here, if it didn't have the, the, the foreground light, it would still be a beautiful semi silhouette. So, um, so instead of trying to make something out of nothing, I just added a little bit to, to give it, to, you know, to give it something that like, that I would like to see in a picture. 
So yeah. with this image, it's just um, a mag a mag box to the right of the of the frame. Now with this image, it looks like it was probably a composite. But um, because when I when I shoot dramatic shots, I use my Canon eleven to twenty four. I'm able to get very mm. close to my client, which gives me the you know versatility of having the light close to me with still being outside of the frame. So this shot was uh, a single frame, no composite, um, from the right with with a mag box with a diffuser with a focus diffusion. And the reason why I like all these, you know, the reason why I like this image is just because it's very simple. It um and you know it just it gets the job done without it being too busy. You know, and and I I want to just reemphasize what you said there about because I I see this a lot in your style and these photographs that we're going to talk about I'm, I'm I think we're going to see this quite a bit. It's that that idea that you're taking good light and you're like, okay, what can I do to make this just a bit better? How can I take this from an eight to a ten? You know, and and that's what I I, I just want to I think that's going to be kind of the theme of of our chat today is yeah. how you just add just a little something extra to make it extraordinary. Yeah. Um, so I real quick before we go into the next image, Michael, I just got to tell you, there's a, a Devin McCabe says, uh, hey, Trevor, Mike, uh, we got Federico says saludos desde Guatemala. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you got Jenny says hi, guys. Uh, Alexis from Puerto Rico. Uh, I love Alex. He's saying, uh, he's Michael best, Ramos. I love that guy. Love that guy. Yeah, he, he's a stud. Um, him and his wife are amazing. Yeah, so um, you got Joshua says, much uh, uh, love the textures, uh, great location choice. So, um, but yeah, so that theme, keep that in mind, you guys, when you're watching the show and, and when you're listening to Michael, watch how he just takes a good lighting scenario and makes it even better just by adding a little bit of a touch of light. Yeah, and um, just... You and want and, and I'm sorry, but the, like I was talking to you about before is I'm not really, you know, shame. I'm very, uh, I'm a little embarrassed by it, but I'm not really great when it comes to Photoshop. So I try to, I try to do things in camera as much as I can. So many of the shots, unless I say it isn't, they're not composites. So that's why I use the, the, the wide a lot. And if you see that it's, if it's a tighter shot, you see they're off to the left and to the right. That's just to give me a little bit more breathing room to get the light as close as possible without creating shadows or being more contrasty. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You you always have these really nice, soft lighting, you know, nice, soft shadows, good transition from light to shadow. Um, I love it. And we have some BTS as well. We'll get through this set. Um, and then we have some BTS photos as well we can show everybody. So. Um, Michael, I'm just going to kind of click through these. I'll let you explain them. And then as you finish with one, I'll go to the next one if that's cool. All right, cool. This is also at the Art Factory. Um, I wanted to light her in a dramatic way. So I just use a mag sphere, mag grid, plus a, a quarter gel just to give it a little bit, just to take off the blue because of the background mm -hmm. ambient light. And I noticed that the, the groom's leg was still in shadow. So I just threw another another grid to the right, so just to to highlight his leg a little bit. Gotcha. You know, it's interesting because I again during our little pre chat, you kind of talked a lot about how you would shoot something and then you know you like review it and make sure everything looks good before moving on. Do you typically just kind of zoom in, look around the image? Is there anything like any tips you would give to somebody, you know, when they're looking at an image to make sure it's perfect before moving on? So I'm not really a technical person in terms of like, you know, the f-stops and the, you know, the exposure compensation and all that stuff. I'm not really into that stuff. I like to take a test shot of the ambient light and I go from there. It's, it's just, it's just, it's just steps for me. Um, but I've gotten so used to it that it, it, it takes me nothing. So I would suggest people knowing what the ambient is and what you want the ambient to be before you start throwing three lights on into the scene. That's um, a great tip. Going from the foundation up is way easier than throwing lights in and then trying to figure out what's not working. That's a great tip. And I, I actually, I see that a lot in your work because your ambient light and your flash are really well balanced. And so, so when you're saying that, you're, do you actually just turn like your trigger off on your, on your camera, uh, shoot an ambient shot and then turn the trigger back on to be able to, yep. to push in your flash? Yes. Now it's, awesome. a, now it's even easier because I have the, the Canon R6. So uh -huh. now with the mirrorless, you know, before I was using a 1DX, 
So I had to do that more often. Now it's a little, I don't even have to even really shoot a shot. I, I could kind of see kind of more or less, yeah. of what, you know, whatever. So it's, it's kind of a lot better now. That's cool. I love it. Awesome. Tell us about this one. So this one, um, this is exactly what I was telling you. It's not about using, using the tool just because you want to use the tool. Sometimes the tool doesn't have to be the main, the main show. So for this, mm -hmm. I was at this location. There was some beautiful uh, ambient light coming in from the window. And, um, you know, there's a beautiful window light. Um, and instead of just shooting them with the window light, um, this part of the image, which is right under the groom, was lit correctly but the right side of the image where the key where the where the keyboard is where the piano where, keys yeah the piano keys are it was completely dark and i thought that you know what i'd rather just light that with a grid and a and a sphere just to bring dimension to the picture and to tell and to give it a story because if not it looks just looks like a table and mm -hmm. i think um out of all the images, this is the one that a bunch of my friends contacted me like, oh, I want a piano shot. I want this. So sometimes the littlest detail is what makes an image. And this is a great example of that. A perfect example. I love that because you're right. Without that light on those piano keys, it just would not look the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I love that, man. And this one looks almost kind of similar in that it looks like you used natural light was probably kind of the focus, right? Yep, the natural light was the focus. Um, her, the top of her head, like kind of to the left, was a little bit, a little bit. Um, it was a little bit dark because I wanted to get her beautiful hair, you mm -hmm. know, in focus, and I wanted to get like the details of the dress in focus with the with the window light. So I had somebody behind um, shooting towards the groom, hitting him in the in the in the chest. Yeah, that kind of illuminated a little bit of light to, to her chin. Um, you know, if I had a second shot at this, I maybe would have aimed the light a little bit more towards him and not towards her. But um, you know, I, you know, most of my shots are done very quickly, and I go on to the next pretty quickly. Um, yep. But I, I just wanted that just to give a little bit of separation from the background. Absolutely, and that's exactly it's just that subtle separation, yep. you know, underneath his chin, for example, that that makes those shots. Yeah, it's beautiful as well. Thank you. This one, it's same location. Um, there's this beautiful room that has all these like hanging lights, very dark in there. And um, I just wanted something that framed them. You know, this is not my typical shot. This is something that I, I don't do often, but I thought it was really cool. And I, I, I know that they like this type of style. So I just, you know, I put a, I, I got a boom, you know, I just a, a light stick, my assistant, I always have an assistant with me. And um, they just yeah. put the light over him with the with the mat with a quarter gel, mag grid and a sphere, and just you know give her a little bit of light. So when you said uh, not your typical style, do you mean like shooting through things, like with things in the foreground? Is that what you're I, referring to? I shoot sometimes like that, um, but it's not my typical. My typical is more like the other prior, more it's a little bit more editorial. Um, you know, more editorial, a little bit, a little, uh -huh. not bright, but, you know, not this dark, but um, I like to shoot it. I just, you know, yeah. most of my clients don't go for it, so I don't shoot it as, as much. You know, but when I look at your images, your images all look so timeless, I think is the right word, um, where I feel like it doesn't matter when you look at them, you're going to just absolutely love them for what they are. Uh, they're the type of images that the couple will love, the mom will love, the grandma will love, like everybody yeah, yeah, in the that, family that, will that's love. That's what I'm going for. Um, so. Appreciate it. Uh, um, I think my, my daughters are home from school. <laughs> and they're having, having almost too much fun back there. I hope you can't hear them. Um, and then it looks like uh, here's another shot uh, in this set. Tell us about this one. Let me see. So this shot. Uh oh, did I lose you, Michael? No, I, I still hear you. I might have lost you. I hear you. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm here. Glitch here, but go ahead, Michael. Tell us about this one. All right, cool. So with this one, um, I saw some light coming in. This is in an alley. You know, it's in um in a in um. There's a room at the back. 
and then we were in the staircase and it had some light coming in available light coming in from the window so i liked that it had texture on the brick so i put them into where there was a hot spot to backlight them to separate them from this from the scene and i use a focus diffuser with the with the bot no actually no this was um grid mm -hmm. fear combo um just to pop some light onto her this one's kind of so far. Did you have it kind of behind this wall? Yeah, he was hiding behind the wall. Because at this point, it's kind of a more of a structural, kind of a wider shot. So I didn't really care too much about the shadow on her on her chin, under her chin. Um, because it's more of like sure, you know, more sure. of a creative shot. So I didn't mind being too far away with the smaller with the smaller yeah. uh, modifier. Yeah. Oh, I love it. This Thank is you. one of those classic. So yeah, so this one. <laughs> so, so tell us, was this all natural light or no, this is Magbox right. Huh? This is Magbox right, yeah. So it was kind of like a crummy type of like cloudy day. And I wanted to give it a little bit of pop um, and he loves his car. So basically he brought his car with him and I want just to give it a little bit of a sexiness, kind of an edgy type of thing. And um, I went with the focus diffuser because it gives a little bit of a harsher light. And I didn't, I, I usually shoot a little bit more 45 mm -hmm. degree. Here, I went a little bit broader just to get some like edginess on the dress and the shadows of the dress and stuff like that. And, you know, it worked out. They loved it. Um, but yeah, that, that's one of the shots I, I did with that. I, I love that. I, it's uh, that whole set, man. Uh, like I said, everybody just loved it. It was really popular. Um, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, didn't we feature it in our top five as well? I think it was featured yes. in the top five a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so. That was in there. Amazing stuff. Um, right on. Well, like I said, I, I wanted to just kind of go through those because I thought it was a good uh, kind of showing of one couple in various different scenarios and kind of using different lighting. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I would also love uh, to show some of your other images here. Um, and so I actually, I'm going to just pull one up real quick here. Uh, let's see here. So Michael, for this first one, let me share my screen. It's a shot of, you got this couple, um, dancing here. Uh, and, and I love the behind the scenes because it shows just how simple, uh, this was that you lit it, but tell us about this image. So <clears throat> I love the image. Um, but, you know, they were in shadow because the DJ had lights coming in. Everything was behind them. But um, she had such great, you know, this is this is what you call a lucky fluke shot. <laughs> um, but it the fluke is that she actually dipped away where my light was. But I was ready for it. I basically told uh -huh. my assistant, stay right here. And I just went upstairs and I was just being a sniper, just waiting. Um, and sometimes you have to do that. Um, sometimes you get lucky and this, you know, the way she, that he dipped her was perfect right into my light. And, you know, if I would, if I was doing a portrait, I would have probably had it on the other side. Cause I have a portrait of this scene before the people uh -huh. came in with the clouds and it looked yeah. beautiful, but I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to rep, you know, to replicate that during a live action thing. And it just happened to, to work out for me. I, I love, I want to show the BTS here. I'm actually just going to go share my screen um, so we can fly through these here. Yeah. But I want to show the uh, the BTS on this one because like you said, it, it you, you just had that light perfectly. The guy, it looks like your assistant had it on a little monopod, almost like a little mini tripod or lighting stand there. Yeah. Um, and was it just the mag sphere on there? Is that all, all that you have? Uh, yeah, the sphere. Because I, I had the grid, but because the dance floor is so big there that I was afraid that he was going to miss you know, miss the, you know, cause it's a little bit more of a broader light. I mean, yeah. less, you know, it's a, not as focused. So I just told him to just put the, the sphere on just to give it a little bit of softness. And, you know, I was lucky to get that shot. I love it, man. That's awesome. Isn't that the worst when you're on one side of the dance floor and then they go to finish the dance and, but they dip the other way. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. And you just hope that your second shooter got it. Yeah. You're just like, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, so let's go. I love that shot. Thank you so much for sharing about that one. So this one here, uh, tell us about this one. Well, that's my beautiful wife. 
So um, we were in Dominican Republic. We were shooting a wedding and she was a guest. You know, she came with me. Uh-huh. And there's this beautiful, you know, it's this place called Casa de Campo in in uh, in Dominican Republic. And it has this beautiful, um, this it's, it's a place called Atos de Chavon, which is just, it looks like a Span- like a European village. And uh-huh. um, I wanted to shoot my wife there. And I, I, you know, one of my clients, actually, this dress that she's wearing is uh-huh. from the other red dress that we're going to show later. You know, I shot the girl at the castle and I get very close to my clients. So thank you, Stephanie, for lending Stephanie your dress Um, because I'm probably going to send this to her anyway. But I sent so basically I shot this with I shot my bride with that. And when I told her my wife would love to use that dress, she's like, take it. So we actually took my one of my bride's dresses to DR to shoot that for her. So here, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool uh, story. But for this shot, you know, the light was beautiful. The textures were beautiful. You know, everything was working. So for uh-huh. me, what was really important here was to get her a little bit brighter than the than the exposure on the on the stairs, just to pop her a little bit. So if you yeah. show the BTS, yep, this one here. I have my best friend Jason Langley. Everybody knows him. Um, he came to help me. Thank you, Jason. But uh, here I have the focus diffuser just because it gives a little bit more pop, um, you know, with the light. And it was very sunny out that day. So it just gave yeah. her just enough lighting so it could, you know, kind of like stand her out from the from the highlights. And then if you look at the bottom, you see how it's kind of dark in the bottom. Yeah. Um, I actually had another light there with this. Um, you know what? That wasn't magma. That was just bare. So I, I can't mm-hmm. even say it was it. But on the bottom here, if you go to the original image. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I see it. You kind of opened up the, the shadows over here. Yeah. But, that, you know, I couldn't open it up in post. So I had to do it with a little bit of lighting just to help me out to get it started. Um, just because I didn't like that it was so black. Um, and you know, I just framed her within that scene, but that I had to get sent out because I just, again, I don't know how to do that stuff. Um, I'm going to start learning now during these times, I'm starting to learn things about myself. I didn't know. So I'm going to start learning how to do these things. So I could be a little bit more dynamic. You know what though, Michael, I think you should just stay passionate and stay as an expert in the things that you do best. And then the other things that, you know, whether it be Photoshop or whatever, like you said, just hire it out. Yeah. You know, there's, there's so many different resources out there we can take advantage of. And so you don't have to be the best at everything, um, but you certainly know how to, to light and photograph. It's a pride thing. Sure. You want to learn. You want to know. <laughs> Even though you don't do it, you want to know how to do it. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful shot. I When we brought it up, I saw a bunch of hearts pop up on the on the chat. Um, Joshua uh, Thornburg said fantastic. So thank you. Um, absolutely lovely. Uh, let's go on to this shot here, number three. Um, so this one... This one caught my eye because it, 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 and actually, it looks like we can just barely see right over here, kind of how you lit this one. Is that right? The yep. is it the Max Fear? Yeah, it's a Max Fear, and then I have an also one of the little times that I do it using a second light um, uh-huh. to to you know to stand to make the to make it stand out more. Um, so with this shot, I saw the stairs. I saw the ambient light from the from from the tungsten lights from the from the stairs that I was like lighting the stair, so I don't have to worry uh-huh. about that. So I just said, you know what? Let me let me light them. But then I felt like they were kind of dark and in the in in darkness, like they were just popping out of nowhere, like a little creature. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just yeah. felt a little weird. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Let me throw a blue because there's orange and yellows tones in the thing, so it will give a good mix. And that's what I got. And if you show the BTS, I have my uh, trusty partner in crime. Yeah, you, may know her. Her. you may know her as a Magmod ambassador, Adrian Longo. There she is practicing on me. You know, I was practicing on her to see how the shot will come out. I get that. You know what, though? This is important uh, in that uh, getting that set up 
you know, and having your flash all set up and then being able to bring in a couple in and just saying, boom, stand right here. And it looks like you're just an absolute professional, um, which, which you are obviously. Important. But I think that's very important. I think that's something that I really push. Um, to me, it's about the experience. It's not about the final image, to be honest. You know, you could go to a restaurant and you could have the best meal in the world, but if your experience or you're, or you're, you know, you're delayed and stuff yeah. like that, that could ruin an experience. And to me, I always go out and, and try it out before bringing my client, especially when it's something more than one light. Um, yeah. It just gives a better experience. It gives a better quality to your, to your services. It's so true, man. I love that. I love the example you use with the restaurant because it's so true. The food could be amazing, but if your experience is bad, you're not going to recommend it to anybody. Yep. And so, yeah, you're, you're it's so true. Uh, by the way, Alex is saying, uh, oof, love the use of contrast with the colors on this one. <laughs> so he's referring to the, that, that, uh, Oh no, that he, that, that's, that's their style. So I, like, you know, I got you, I got you, Alex. <laughs> So, you know, it's funny, Michael, I, I feel like I've gotten to the point now where anyone who comes on the show has to show a cigar shot because it seems yeah. like it comes up so often. But what was interesting was you had sent me about 15 or 20 photos to kind of look through and, you know, just some options. And this one stood out for me because it was a cigar shot, but shot very differently than what I've seen. Um, so I thought, you know, I'm going to I'm going to ask Michael how you how you created this one. So tell us about this shot here. So this was in Dominican Republic. It was very misty out. So it had a little bit, if you look on top of the cloud and on top of the smoke, there's still, there's other stuff going on there. So it was kind of misty. And yeah. I said to myself, you know, I've done cigar shots that I lighted from the front and the back and those are beautiful, but I wanted to give a little bit of a darker tone to the front and give it a little bit of more mystique and really focus on the smoke and not the person that's actually smoking. So sure but I still didn't want to get them completely silhouetted. So what I did was I sat, I stood them outside in the grass, outside of the tent. And I shot at a higher, at a high, you know, like the, the flash was at a higher power. Yeah. And what that did was me having them right outside the tent. I was using the tent as a sort of a, a little bit of a reflector. So yeah. the first couple of shots I took, they were too bright. So I just kept them let, you know, I made them go a little bit further back um, until I got the exposure that I wanted in the fill. So, so basically the light behind them, you had it at a very high power. So if you were shooting on the other side of them, they would be extremely bright, like way yeah. overexposed. Yeah. And, the the light, is, yeah. and it's basically bouncing off a tent behind you, illuminating them just a little bit, giving them a little bit of fill in the front. Is that right? Yeah. Because honestly, even with a neutral density filter, at yeah. that, at, with that much darkness, they still like his, his face would have been more lit than that. You yeah. know what I mean? Even at the lowest power. So I want just to give a little, a little kiss of light. Yeah. I love it. You know, one time I, I did a shot like this where I was ending an engagement session and we were walking to the car and I saw it was like a mattress firm store. Right. And so I said, Hey, would you guys mind standing right here? It was by a road. And same type of thing. I put a light behind them and I bounced it off the window of the mattress firm store. Yeah. Uh, there was like mattresses and signs and things like that. And, and they came back and illuminated them. Same type of thing, but it was so funny. They just got the biggest kick out of knowing that they literally shot a photo, right? You know, in the, in the weirdest of locations, but you're using that light, you know, in the, in the way you're <laughs> bouncing behind you and stuff. Yeah, so, so. It, you know, I, I, I really like this shot. This, I'm actually building my new website and this is one of the shots on my front page. Uh -huh. I, you know what, those are the shots that the grooms, they look at it and, you know, and they're just like, Hey, I don't care who you hire, but I really like this guy. <laughs> so, um, fantastic. So tell us, Michael, tell us about this one. This one, I, I think what caught my attention here was the reflection coming off the bridge in the distance. But what I love about the shot is how well balanced the light is on them. Like it looks so nice on them and it just works so well with the, the background as well. Yeah. So I got to know how you lit it. So this, this, this couple, I wanted to kill it for, I love this couple. Uh, they're from Florida. Um, and they came, they came to dirt to uh, New York just to do their engagement session. So mm -hmm. I wanted to really kill it for them. It was on father's day and you know, we went out at four in the morning to, oh, wow. to get this shot. Um, so when we got there, um, I saw that the light was kind of a little bit further out you know, already, you know, already uh, going up on the other side. And 
what caught my eye was the highlight of the bridge and yeah. also the highlight right above them. To some people that, you know, when they see that, they think, oh, that's, you know, maybe you could have gone to the left or right to probably get less. But I think it separates them from the scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that yeah. little building separates them from the scene. And I wanted to just bring just enough light because I sometimes go dramatic. Um, but you don't, I, I don't feel dramatic because the thing is that the foreground where the, you know, right behind them where the wood, the wood, uh, the wood floor is. Um, it's a little darker than what everything else is. So if I would have gone dramatic, we would have lost the detail in that. So I didn't want to go too crazy. Yeah. There weren't clouds in the sky that I needed to bring down the app, the, the, the shutter speed more down for. So what I really wanted to do was kind of match the background and give it more of a glowy type of like golden hour. But this wasn't yeah. golden hour. This was like blazing sun, you know, coming up. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is one of their favorite images. And uh, I actually, you know, this is one of my favorite images of that year. So, you know, I'm happy yeah. that we were able to share that. It is very, very nice. Um, what, do you remember what you might have told them? Uh, like, do you have like posing prompts that you typically ask people uh, to do? Like, do you, you remember what caused this reaction? So basically I say things like, tell her something, tell her something nasty <laughs> it could be whatever. It doesn't have to be nasty, nasty. It could be, I farted. I always say that I farted. I always say that. I'm like, guys, oh, I feel so good now. And they're like, why? It's like, I just farted. It just felt amazing. And they start laughing. And to me, I, I, I'm very slow with my clients. I'm not uptight. Um, if you look yeah. at my work, there's a lot of emotion in between. It's not static. Um, of course, you have the static shots because you want, you know, some of my clients want like the, the GQ type of like commercial look, but sure. I always go back to what their personalities are. You know what I mean? So I try to tell them stuff to make them laugh. It was probably farting or tell her something to make her blush. That's basically what I go to and it works out. Yeah. You know, exhibit A, you know, they're just happy. They're having fun. I sometimes sing, like if they're Spanish, I sing a reggaeton song. If they're this, I try to, I try to become personal and it kind of lets them come out of their shell. And I kind of direct them because I'm very, very, very particular when it comes to light. Um, so instead of me telling them, look into this light, look into this light, look into this light, I say, hey, guys. And I'm never going to tell them to laugh and look at the light. So mm -hmm. I'll make them laugh, gen you know, genuine, you know, like a genuine smile or laugh. And if she's going yeah. away, it's like, listen, guys. Keep on having fun, but please put your chins towards this way when you're having fun. Gotcha. And I could get a shot from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's a great tip. Um, Devin McCabe, by the way, she says, uh, Michael Ramos, I'm a huge fan. You know that. Thank you. <laughs> Devin's awesome. We need to get her on here as well. Yeah. Um, so, Michael, let's go on to this uh, image six. You got, if you don't mind, there's like three more images here that uh, that I, I, I picked out that I had to have you talk about. Um, yeah. This this one as well. It kind of it kind of reminds me of that last image a little bit, uh, where you just have this great balance of light on them and light in the background. So, tell us about this one. I saw so it, this was like super super sunset, very strong light coming in, uh -huh. and. I just saw how beautiful it looked on her hair. You know what I mean? Because like sometimes if somebody's blonde, it blows out their hair completely. Yeah, but yeah. it just went with the whole scene. I, like, you know, they're both kind of tan, the cream tones, um, the red dress. It, it all worked, worked out for me. So instead of trying to go crazy and trying to go different ways, I just basically got down with the 200 2 And I got as close as possible with my light. And um, like I was telling you before, this was, I shot this with the uh, Magbox with a Profoto B10 plus. So it's 500 Watts. Um, and I used to be a Godox user and I love Godox. There was just a couple of things that I like Profoto a little better for, but what I did miss the most was the extra hundred Watts. You know what I mean? Because it gives it that right. extra little juice that you need. From, so, the from the 8600 to the, the pro photo, which kicks out 500. Is that what you're referring yeah. to? Okay. Yeah. So with the mag box, with the focus diffuser, it actually gives me just a little bit more kick just because it's just, 
it's 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 spreading the light a little bit more you know more focused and it's not i'm not losing you know a stop or two i'm not sure how many even i'm not even sure how many stops you're losing yeah it's it's typically depends on which diffusion panel you're comparing it to but usually about two stops i mean i would say confidently one and a half to, to two stops uh, again depending now the interesting thing is some soft boxes you put a grid on it and you're losing an additional stop or two yeah um, whereas the focus diffuser you're able to focus that light but you're not losing uh you know compared to other diffusion i feel like it grids. magnifies I, I i i use it to give the extra punch that i am missing from the ad 600 having 600. so yeah. um it's where it worked out perfectly here and you know for this one i had a quarter gel on it because I shot mm -hmm. it without the gel and it was still a little bluish and I'm very, very uh, sensitive to color. So I just threw a, a, a quarter, a quarter uh, CTO on it. You know, I, I find just adding that little quarter CTO always tends to warm up the skin tones. I can't remember yeah. who said it best, but they said it's like a chocolate chip cookie. It's just, it just warms it yeah. up just really easily. Yeah. I never go, the only time I ever go full CTO, cause like, I know that some people do the whole like go pull some CO and go to tungsten, you know, like all that stuff. I like to go with what I see. I just mm -hmm. feel like the quarter CTO eliminates blue. That's all I yeah. need. I just needed to, even if it's just white, <laughs> like the blue is what kills me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the, the quarter just eliminates that for me enough for me to feel comfortable with what I'm shooting. Um, and you know, and what you I'm know What's up? Oh, sorry. I, I was just going to ask, do you normally put the gel inside the box? Is that how you normally do it? Yeah. So, I, you know, I was saying this to you. Other than the focus diffuser, um, the mag box to me is like a very sturdy, good soft box. Like, you know, and, you know, I know this is mag mod and I, you know, I think the mag, the mag box is a great box, but you were, if you were to get a pro photo box, the same size, it's kind of the same light, you know what I mean? Now, sure. yeah, all, all boxes are, are equal yeah. if they're 24 inches using the same diffusion panel. You're it's totally science, right. You know, it's science or whatever you call it, right? So there's no magic thing that's happening. It's just what makes, I, I believe, what makes MagMod MagMod and what makes it one of the leaders is the convenience of it. Um, me wanting to add a quarter gel on my pro photo system, I have to take out the thing, put the thing on, take it out. It's I'm losing time. I'm losing light. I'm losing my clients, you know, my clients patience and I'm losing yeah. my creativity. I'm, yeah. I'm a person that I need to be focused on the next thing over and over. Like if I'm, if I'm kind of stuck somewhere, I kind of lose my creativity. And I think where, 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 um, where MagMod like really does a good job is making it convenient and quick to go to the next thing in which case it makes me more creative and it makes yeah. me strive to be better and not have to worry about the equipment because even with me with pro photo i love the i love all like the tools but um the gel the grid the everything they're all in separate little packs and this and that and you're losing things i like that you could just put everything magnet magnetize put it in your pocket and i could just Literally, I throw them like frisbees to my assistant sometimes. Like, oh, add this. You know what I mean? It's a very yeah. simple thing. And like I said, like in, in my images, little things are what matter the most. You know what I mean? That little, the 30 seconds less that you're spending on trying to put something together or Velcro something, MagMod does it in such a short time that it makes you a better photographer. The actual equipment isn't making you the better photographer. What the equipment is letting you do in your spare time is what's making you a better photographer. I love that. So, I, I hope our team got that because that's like a commercial right there. Yeah, it's put in a commercial. <laughs> we'll send you a check for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's so true though. It's so true. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, I got to say, so this image, uh, you said it was a 200. Is that right? A 200 F2? Yeah, 200. Oh, man. No wonder you got in the background there. 200 at 2 I love it. I love it. So, Michael, we got uh, just a few more here. Uh, tell us about this one. Uh, I think this is the same dress. I you said her name was Stephanie. I think. <laughs> yeah, her name is Stephanie with an E at the end. Stephanie with no I, and my wife is with the I. But I love this girl. She's awesome. 
Well, that's so, awesome. So tell, tell us, uh, this, I mean, this dress now has become popular, but tell, tell us about uh, how you use it here, because this is incredible. Oh, thank you. So, you know, I had somebody from, this is at Ohika Castle in, in uh, New York, in Long Island. And she wanted a shot, you know, she showed me a shot and I wanted to make it better. Like, you know, every time, you know, as photographers, when people send you Pinterest, you're like, all right, I got to one it up because, you know, then, you, you know, you haven't done your job. So I wanted to be something dramatic, but I wanted it to also look something timeless. I didn't want to make it too dark. I wanted to um, keep the details of the, of the building. And I love, 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 love that I waited till almost sunset because I love the lines coming through the windows, you know, yes. like just the shadows. It just gives it a, another dimension. So exactly. for this, I want it to go a little softer, but I also want to give it a little bit more edge because I know this is a very little detail, but you see how the shadows are casting right on the, on the windows, like yeah. on the, the window sills. I want it to have a shadow under her. I usually don't like shadows under the chin. But for this shot, I specifically try to do that to give a little bit to try to lend itself to the background. You know what I mean? I wanted to give it an edgier look. So I use the focus diffuser uh, to the right and I'm using the 11 to 24. So I was out of the frame and, uh, you know, full blast. I shot it at, uh, you know, at full power. Gosh. And then I had so another light to the left to highlight right there, like by the dress where it's like, where it's, uh, where it's folded. Is it right down here? Yeah, down there. And you see at the left corner, it was still lighting, you know, all that area. I lit it with, uh, with, um, what did I like that with? That, that with the, the, the B10, you know, bare bolt. So it wasn't a magma product. It was just, I, I needed just to add something else to it. A little bit of light and it looks like yeah it kind of lit up this grass just a little bit yeah. over here and, and you know what's interesting is that i think that adds so much dimension as well it kind of reminds me of the house the house doesn't look flat because you have the shadows coming off of it yeah and by adding that light here this this goes back to what we were saying in the beginning man it's like you take you take a photo and you're like okay how can i take it from ordinary to extraordinary it's just adding that that second light you know to create yeah. some dimension so good man. so good um how about this one here <laughs> this one this one is really interesting it caught my eye because it i was thinking i was thinking first of all i was like is this just like a party of friends or what and then how in the world did he put just that little bit of light right on the couple there i just i loved it so tell us about this, this one was, this was uh at dumbo at a restaurant at a restaurant inside that little new i'm not sure if you've been to dumbo lately but there's like this cool yeah. you know that cool little building that's right on the water that has uh -huh. like a restaurant called Cane, Sugar Cane, I think it's called. It's like, like a Cuban tapas place. And we were going there. We saw like this long table. And I just said, you know what? The, these guys were from Argentina. I started whipping out the Spanish because I don't look Spanish, but like I whipped out the Spanish and it's always like a, a crowd pleaser. And uh, I told them, hey, these guys just got engaged. Let's celebrate to them. You know, let's, you know, raise your glasses and they're all for it. So I told them, I'm not going to shoot you guys. I'm going to shoot through you guys. And I just shot a couple of frames and that's just with the, with the gel, with the gel grid. So did, did you have somebody else holding that the light over the top of them? Yes. So you see at the end, actually, no, you don't see him. He's, he's right at the end to the left. Okay. Like over the last person that's sitting and he yeah. just like, you know, just there chilling, just, Hitting them with this little flash. That's cool. That's a cool shot, man. I love it. Thank you. Good stuff. Well, Michael, let's uh let's wrap it up with this last shot here. In fact, it's funny. I don't think we've talked about so many images on how I shot it, but, but I love it because there's so much good information uh, that you've been sharing. Um, so tell us tell us what you did with this one here. This is such a pretty shot too. Thank you. So this is in the Dominican Republic. This is a you know we've become really good friends. Uh, this is um. One of, one of the most epic weddings that we've shot uh, for the studio. And, you know, to me, it was one of those days, like her hair was perfectly done, you know, everything was good. And then it just started pouring, like mm. straight up pouring. All the girl's hair was wet. It was just craziness. 
And as soon as we got out of the church, like the rain stopped. And I just like yelled. I was like, get the mag box, get the mag box. You know what I mean? Because the sky was just crazy. And these are the real skies. This is not a fake sky. <laughs> Don't know how to do that. But um, I just saw the skies that were going crazy. I, you know, I, I, I like to shoot high speed sync. And, you know, that 11 to 24 is a great lens um, at 4.0. It's just very sharp. And um, I just shot a couple of test shots. Like I said, I looked at it. I looked at, at the exposure. I didn't, you know, this, the, the church was a little darker than this. I, 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 I lit up in post, but I, I, you know, I, like I said, I looked at the ambient before throwing in the light and this is just the yeah. same formula. This is not anything crazy. This is mag box with the focus diffuser top, right out of the frame. It's not a composed shot. It's, I mean, it's not a composite um, and not cloned out. It's basically me being at 11 gives me gives me more leeway to get closer and get my light closer to uh create softer light yeah do you um, find yourself using that 11 millimeter quite a bit then i use it for more of the dramatic shots i'm i'm more of a 50 yeah. 85 guy um 50 gotcha. 85 is where i where i kind of stay um but when it comes to anything environmental you know anything that has to do with landscapes or something like that i like to throw i like to throw the wide I'm I'm waiting I'm waiting for the new 35 to come out. Maybe I'll get that to just to, you know, to round it out. But yeah. um, I just I just love the lens and it goes up to 24. The 24 is really nice. There's not much vignetting, so um, that's you know my go-to for dramatic shots. Yeah, you know, one time I was shooting a wedding in the Dominican Republic as well, and uh, it started raining on us right during the middle of the ceremony, and it was outside. <laughs> and so they they had umbrellas that they gave to the bride and groom, and a few people in the audience had umbrellas. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything though. <laughs> so I'm running around trying to take pictures and the rain just started getting worse and worse and worse. And my camera's getting all wet and I didn't want it to get, you know, super wet. And so I had an undershirt on, but I took off my dress shirt and I literally wrapped it around my camera so I could shoot without trying to get it all soaking wet. I don't even know if that helped. But I just remember my wife, my wife was in the audience and we're looking over at me and seeing me with my undershirt shooting totally soaking wet. And she's just like shaking her head like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I look like a weird for the shot, man. Anything for the shot. I just I didn't know I wasn't gonna like see cover like I you know the yeah. ceremony was happening. but to make your vote like certainly has some wet weather that's for sure yes and it's uh, from it's one second to the other <laughs> it is it is well those are those are amazing man I I gotta I gotta ask uh you know like I said the one thing I've noticed uh just in the last few months it seems like every time you post you just keep getting huge uh you know people are just loving your work um, is there anything that you, you know, as far as the Magma community, uh, I, I don't even know, I guess maybe what this question is exactly, but is there, is there something about the Magma community that you like and the reason that you post there and, and maybe even advice to other people that, you know, are, are in that community? I mean, I think like Magma community for me is like cheer, you know, like the show cheers, like, you know, people's names, you know what I mean? It's not, it's, it's big, it's a big community, but it's still kind of like people that you would hang out with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the community, you know, there's always there's always ways to make it better, right? You know, there's always ways to make it better. Um, but from, you know, the what, what I think is great about it is you, you have a platform to actually to actually show your work. Um, yeah. I think I think having somewhere to go that you could, you know, cause the thing is that a lot of places, like, let's say, I don't want to mention other groups because then it's like, kind of like dogging the group, but there's certain groups out there that are, let's just say an OCF group. Right. Uh -huh. But now, not everybody's using the same stuff. So what happens in those, in those groups, and I notice it a lot. is if I go in there and I say that I use Profoto, somebody will say, well, Godox would have give you the same thing or vice versa. And there's a lot of people that are just, they're, they're, you know, just like everything that's going on now, everything is this or that, right? Yeah. So when you go to some of these groups, they're too broad for everybody to get along because everybody has their own, their own agenda. When it comes to MagMod, you're in there because you have MagMod, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're trying to 
create with Magmod. And I think that's a great thing. And it's a great thing that you guys do. And you do a great job and everybody else there does a great job of uh, creating a community that people could, you know, come and talk and, yeah. and, you know, and be there, be themselves. Um, what I would say that I think would be better is be a little bit more transparent. Um, sometimes, you know, I see, you know, like, 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 you know, what we were talking about, um, transparency is, you know, especially for people, cause a lot of people in these groups are, are new to photography or just trying, you know, as much as people like to downplay or not make fun, but downplay like light and airy, light and airy, there's a, there's, a, there's room for it. Yeah. There's times that I shoot light because that's what the environment is. But some yeah. people are trying to transition from light and airy to something a little bit more in the middle. And misinformation is the worst thing that you could give, especially when you're held at a higher standard. So mm -hmm. if there's something that you're posting that's a composite, say it's a composite because sometimes things are posted that for people that know, there's no way that the face could be that soft with a mag sphere at 30 feet away. Sure, sure. But when somebody says mag sphere right, I'm not sure they're doing it on purpose, but not saying that it's a composite makes people f believe that they could do that. And when they don't, they get discouraged. Yeah. And nobody's growing. So I think transparency is key that should change. So you're, I, I love that. So you're saying if, if you're posting in the community, make sure that you, you use it as a way to, of sharing, but also being transparent about how you created it. Yeah. How, I mean, how far away the light was, that thing's. Everybody has, you know, everybody has their secrets. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if you want to say, listen, this is a brag piece, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to put it as an educational piece, yeah. things shouldn't be missing because yeah. That's not going to help people grow. Yeah, you know what I mean. I love that. Yeah, that's great advice, man. It's good. It's good. I and, and those are the things. Like I said, I I think when people see posts and they can tell, they can see right through that whole transparency thing, and and it really it 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 uh, establishes that brand of who you are as a person. Yeah, you know, and it becomes it's like is this the kind of person that I can see myself hanging out with years from now, or am I just going to pick up a few things here and there and, and move on because I can tell they're not the type of person I really want to hang out with. That's yeah. Cause like, think about it. Like you see a picture, right. And they say that was taken this way. And then they go out and they shoot three people and they're like, why does mine have shadows? Why does mine have that spread? And they're like, but this guy does it. Why can't I do it? And then they get discouraged and they stop using their mag mods and they start and they, you know, go to whatever. It's very simple. Yeah just don't say anything. If you're not going to, if you don't want to be completely honest with what you're doing and that's fine. Cause sometimes I post some, you know, like sometimes I post something like, let's say it's a location that I really don't want to share. You know, let's be honest here. Sometimes you, you find a location. I sometimes go into the city and I look for locations and I look for locations and I look for locations. And some people just are at home playing PlayStation. They're like, Oh, what's that location? I'm like, dude, I did all the recon work. Go look for it. You know what I'm saying? If I were to tell them, Oh, it's in the lower east side. Like, just tell them I'd rather not tell you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so and, and be specific if you're gonna share. Yeah. Exactly. Be specific. Yeah. Be, you know, if you're going to share and if you want to be known as somebody that's gonna help build somebody's confidence and and whatever, just give the whole sauce. You know, you don't wanna not put the salt in in a in a recipe. You know, if, yeah. if salt's there, tell them that's salt. You know what I mean? So I think that's my, my, but other than that, I love the community, you know? Um, and I think it's great. I think there's a lot of people on there. A lot of people that are here. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. But I, um, I think that it's going in a great direction and uh, hope we get some new, new toys soon after the, yeah. all this stuff is going on. So uh <laughs> anything yet but but uh but but magmod as as everybody knows magmod is always looking at uh, trying to come up with the latest uh product to make photography yeah. fast easy and awesome and and uh we certainly aren't stopping so um you guys are, are looking great. you guys are great well we, we're excited well hey michael this has been this has been super enlightening i've really enjoyed this conversation it's funny because when we started chatting 
gosh, I want to say two hours ago. Now I, I'm saying when we just, you and I started chatting, it was like light outside. I could see your shelves behind you and everything. Like now, which project now? Now it looks like you're in a cave. This is not so, working. This little ring light isn't working. Not working. Yeah. Well, well, I certainly have appreciated the time that you spent with me. I know it's been quite a bit. Um, so I'll let you get back to your family, but thank you so much. Thanks for being here and thanks for sharing those incredible photos with thank us. You. I appreciate it. Take care. Absolutely. And I just want to tell everyone really quickly, guys, if you are catching this at the end, we always put these recordings up on YouTube where he, I, it seems like we always get a couple thousand people to get on there and watch it. So um, thanks for being there. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Thanks for watching here on Facebook as well. Each and every week we do a How I Shot It. So be sure to join us. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys.